What is going on guys? One of my viewers emailed me last night asking me to go to the UFC event today and I couldn't turn down that offer. Uh, this is Nate Diaz versus Jorge Masvidal. Super popular event and I figured since my birthday was coming up, you know, I'll let this guy treat me. And there was actually a UFC event a couple years ago McGregor versus, I don't remember, it might have actually been Diaz, that was on my actual birthday. Uh, but I'm definitely going to send this guy like $500 or $600 worth of meat. So uh, it's about 5 o'clock right now. Got to head down to Manhattan before all well, the traffic's already probably going to be crazy. So hopefully we're not too late. Do a little vlog, uh, see what's going on. I got my cute little outfit on today. I'm wearing like six layers. Uh, it's completely ridiculous. Uh, just in case I get cold. I also got some like hand warmers in my uh, pocket, but uh, always, always prepared. Uh, so hopefully we have some footage to take. I'm imagining it's going to be so noisy in the arena. Uh, I should probably bring my EMF meter into the arena. I know you guys like seeing that stuff. And one thing I always hypothesized was, are the better fighters the people that can just perform in that high pressure environment? You know, thousands and thousands of people in an arena, very high, you know, radio frequency levels, very high stress environment. Makes you wonder if that's why some people fall apart. Uh, but uh, let's head down there. Probably gonna take about an hour, an hour and a half. So this is the highway that's on the west side of Manhattan. Out of all the past jobs and every single time I've worked in Manhattan for the most part, uh, this is how I've gotten down here. You know, my commute isn't too terrible. Usually anywhere from, you know, 50 minutes to an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, some nights, like a Saturday night, it can get really crazy and take like an hour and a half, two and a half hours, uh, depending on where you're going, depending on what's going on in the city. I'm actually curious how close we're going to be able to get to the garden. Uh, I'm not really sure how the parking is around here. I haven't been to Madison Square Garden in God knows how long. Getting down to Manhattan usually isn't too bad, but then when you get in the city, you know, let's say it takes you 45 minutes to get down there, it could take you another 20 or 30 minutes just to go one or two blocks. And yeah, usually it's more conducive uh, for me to park a little further away then either walk or take the subway uh, where I'm going. But most of my jobs I've worked, you know, I'm getting out of work at like 3, 4, 5 a.m. So, you know, if I have to walk two, three blocks to my car, I'd rather just hop in the car and, and head home. So we're heading across town on 44th Street, and then we should just go down 7th Avenue. Uh, the total trip length is like 1.2 miles, but it says it's going to take about 20 minutes. Uh, so yeah, you could probably run there about twice as fast as you can drive. I feel like I'm gonna pee my pants, so I'm tempted to actually get out here now and just use the bathroom in a restaurant. I think I'm going to because... So this is my EMF meter. This doesn't actually measure like a numeric value. It just gives you a color based on the range and where you are. Unfortunately, everything in New York City is likely to be extreme. Uh, I'm not sure if the extreme starts flashing. Ooh, what's going on over there? Nothing exciting for you boys. She little little too uh little too many Pillsbury dough rolls. Okay, so you see it does flash. So sometimes it flashes and sometimes it just says extreme. You know, every part of Manhattan has such high levels of EMF. And maybe when we get to other parts of the city it won't be as high. Uh, but this is why, you know, I encourage people to, you know, if you're in a high EMF environment all day. You really make sure where you're sleeping, where you live most of the time is low. Maybe it's because I didn't sleep last night, but I already have such a headache. I wish I had like a glutathione or some type of supplement, B vitamins to help. You know, I'm sure if I, you know, went out somewhere to eat, I'd, I'd feel a little better with something in my stomach, but I just hope I don't have a headache the rest of the night. And then when I'm driving home at two or 3 a.m., my head's gonna be throbbing. Not only is that UFC fight tonight, it's actually Halloween Saturday night weekend. Although, I think most of the Halloween parties were either on Thursday of you know this week or they were Friday night. 
there might still be some stuff going on Saturday night. I mean, we saw that lady that was dressed up, and I think I've seen one or two people that are dressed up, but you know, obviously nothing crazy like like Halloween night. You know, it doesn't seem like anyone's really celebrating anymore. It's very difficult to make turns because even when we get the green light, there's going to be people crossing this way. So we're basically going to have to, you know, wait till these people cross. The light's going to turn red. And then when the light turns red, we'll be able to go. You know, so there's no such thing as legally driving in New York. You know, see what these cab drivers are doing. Everyone's trying to just get through. You know, there's fucking people standing in the middle of the street, walking back and forth, not knowing what they're doing. One thing I always tell myself is not to drive down 7th Avenue between like 30th and 40th Street. And that's exactly what I'm doing here on a Saturday night. Uh, so I never really learned my lesson driving down here. So we got this guy with Florida plates that decided to stop in the middle of the crosswalk instead of going through the yellow light. Uh, this is how you would get a ticket if New York City cops or traffic cops had any sort of competence whatsoever. It looks like there's some spots on 7th Avenue if I want to park and just walk two or three blocks, which is what I should do, uh, but I like pushing my luck and seeing how close I can get. Like, I don't understand. This guy has temporary Alabama plates and the car's from Rhode Island. Who are these people? Me being the dumbass, I decided to push my luck and I've been sitting in my car for another half hour because I had to drive around, you know, all the streets are closed. It's like, if you go past a street, you can't make a right. You have to go down two more streets. It takes 10 more minutes. It's like, I don't know, I'm gonna be about an hour later than I expected, but what are you gonna do? I'm tempted to just pay for parking and, you know, save the headache, but I'm not sure how much it's going to be. I've been stuck in this one spot for at least, like, 15 minutes. Uh, this is on uh, 33rd Street between uh, 6th and 5th Avenue. It's completely fucking ridiculous. A little further down that street, there was actually a bunch of cars parked. Uh, so I'm assuming I should be good here overnight. Uh, we're gonna walk over, we're only about a block away. I'm on West 33rd and 6th Avenue, as a future reference so I don't forget where I parked my car. And Madison Square Garden's on uh, West 33rd and, uh, what is it, 8th Avenue, so maybe five minute walk. Yeah, th this street is gonna be gridlocked all the way down. It would've taken me probably another 20 minutes to to drive over just one street. And they closed this shit off. That's where I was hoping to go down. Oh, look at Je look at that now. 5G. 5G now in New York City. Not that uh, 4G isn't bad enough. We got in, I actually got held up at security for 10 minutes because I had my dumbass meter on me and they were like, oh, what's this What's this RF meter? And I was explaining to the guy, oh, well, it measures Wi-Fi. And he's like, oh, well, why do you carry it on you? What were you saying? They had the Secret Service here because of the Trump? Yeah. They had the Secret Service or something because Trump's here, uh, tighten up security. Weighing in at 171 pounds, fighting out of the Husker, Oklahoma, Charles Lockheed Gold Red Pelican. And now we're going to see his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, a mixed martial artist. Declaring the winner by Chief K.
introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, an undefeated mixed martial artist, holding a perfect professional record. Eight wins, no losses. He's down six feet, four inches tall, weighing in at 246 pounds. Fighting out of Paramaribo Tsunami, Yoshinda Biggie Boy. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Dan Wrigley Alta has called a stop to this contest at 2 minutes, 47 seconds of the very first round. Declaring the winner by knockout, Kevin Lee! Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with Kevin Lee. Kevin Lee, that was a statement. Thank you, thank you. I needed to make one tonight. My back was against the wall. I'm coming out here taking on the most decorated wrestler in this division, and uh, I want to put on a show. You took a statement even in taking this fight.
just having a good time until about an hour ago. I think it's like 11.45 right now. Uh, last 45 minutes has been uh, somewhat of a blur. Uh, I'm trying to remember. Uh, I, I, after the Thompson fight, and even during it, my, my head started hurting a lot. And uh, sometimes when I'm in like, you know, when I used to work in the city, when I used to bartend uh, in high EMF environments, I used to get really bad headaches. But if I stayed hydrated, and uh, usually if I wore some stuff, I'd be okay. But I wasn't staying hydrated tonight because they actually took my water uh, at the entrance because it was a glass bottle. And uh, my, my head's just been hurting worse and worse. And uh, the dare until fight started, and I was trying to just like, you know, stay focused and, and try to, to be like, all right, it's not gonna be that bad. My head doesn't hurt that much, but I, I can't even fucking see straight, so. Um, and, and honestly, it got to the point where I was like, listen, if I gotta sit here for another five fucking minutes, I'm not, I'm torturing myself. So I, I don't know what it is. I don't know if I'm, I'm extra sensitive to EMF. I don't know if I should have just stayed hydrated. I don't know what the fuck to do, but um, this happens every time I go down to Manhattan. Uh, I don't know if I need to bring down like a glutathione supplement or, or take a glutathione supplement before I do this shit. I don't know if I should have just made sure to stay hydrated next time, but my head feels like it's gonna explode and uh, I gotta sit in my car for another hour and a half to drive back. And e even though, you know, it was towards the end, the second to last fight, I was worried that, yeah, I could probably stick it out for maybe 20 or 30 more minutes, but if it takes me, you know, if it takes me an hour and a half to get out of the garden and then another hour and a half to get home, I'm gonna have a fucking stroke, so. Uh, sorry I didn't get much footage for you guys. Uh, it was kind of exciting. Uh, while I was having fun, but maybe I have poor methylation compared to other people and my you know my detox pathways as much as detox is bullshit. Uh, you know some people aren't that efficient at you know the glutathione pathway, all the antioxidant pathways, vitamin C cycle, vitamin E cycle, uh, all that stuff. Uh, I'm definitely near the bottom of the list on that. my head my head just hurts so fucking much. I don't know, I wasn't really even thinking of posting this as a video, the UFC 244 vlog, me complaining in my car for 20 minutes, then some like loud ass footage of the event that you guys can understand, and I couldn't even finish the event, so. Uh, big shout out to uh, the guy that was nice enough to reach out to me and, and buy me the tickets. I'm definitely, I just felt bad, you know, but either way I was gonna send him, uh, I was gonna send him you know, six, seven hundred dollars worth of meat anyway, because those tickets were way too fucking expensive. My head hurts even worse now. It's just so disappointing. Saturday night, you know, I said I was supposed to, you know, I was supposed to go to the gym, edit some videos, do some extra work. So I decided, you know, for once, why not go out and try to do something fun? And this is what fucking happened. Can't take this shit anymore. Just every single thing I do, if I'm not on top of it, I, I something bad happens. Every single thing I do, if I'm not on top of it, something bad happens. I know every time I go down to Manhattan, I get headaches. I know if I don't stay hydrated. I know if I don't take a glutathione supplement, then I'm gonna get a headache. And I, I just don't, I just jump into things like a normal person would be able to do and then it, it never fucking ends. All right, guys, so it's actually the next morning, and of course there's some landscaper down the street making a shitload of noise, but what are you gonna do? So, you know, when I was sitting there, when the till fight was going on, I was like, yeah, I could, I, no, part of me was like, Frank, stop being a little girl, man up. <laughs> you know, it's gonna be half an hour, 40 minutes more, but dude, that drive home was holy. That was, I've had, I've done that a couple times drive home from the city head beating like hell you know, I literally have to like take the headrest off my eyes are half closed I'm laying back with my neck my head is just in so much pain and it's a combination of you know I didn't sleep too well the night before some sleep deprivation and the high EMF environment I don't know what it does to me but it's just a view of beating pain in my, in my left uh, the left side of my head and yeah you know, one part of me thinks oh maybe I have a low pain tolerance but I had double jaw surgery. I didn't take pain medication. 
you know, every, every surgery I've ever had, I never used any pain medication. Uh, but, but these headaches I get in these high EMF environments are something else, man. I don't know what it is, but it's unfortunate. Um, you know, I could have just, you know, if, as I said, and I, if I had a glutathione or NAC, NAC supplement, or if I, maybe if I stayed hydrated or even just brought my, uh, some type of like EMF blocking device, like a hat into the, the arena, I might've been okay. But, you know, not taking any of those precautions, you know, results in what happened last night. So, uh, reason I'm recording now is I wanted to recap uh, my thoughts on the fight. Um, that first fight, I can't remember the guy's name, the tatted up wrestler from New York who fought the guy that went down in weight. Um, and that guy walked into the arena, the, the New York guy. He was like a little, uh, he was a little out of it. He like walked to the, the wrong spot twice. Um, I, I could tell the guy was gonna uh, lose the fight. Um, the Derek Lewis fight versus the uh, Ivanov, uh, that was, Ivanov got robbed uh, of a decision, I think. Uh, but the crowd was chanting USA, USA, USA. Uh, they really wanted the uh, Derek Lewis to win that fight. Uh, so they gave it to him. Uh, you know, the Steven Thompson, the Wonder Boy fight, uh, that's where my that's where my brain started going. Um, you know, I thought it was round three. I thought it was round two, but it was actually round three. The fight flew by, and then that's when I started getting out of it, and I started forgetting things. So, uh, in hindsight, I could have gone down later because, you know, I sat there from like 6 p.m. We watched all the prelim fights. Um, Trump came in. You guys saw Trump came in, and uh, everyone was booing him, and uh, he had all the Secret Service there. Uh, was a fun night for sure. I uh, wish I was a little more put together, but what are you going to do?